of moving from hardware appliances to sort of virtual functions built on software running on commodity hardware. And SDN is this concept of decoupling the control plane from the data plane and running the control plane on a separate centralized controller. Right, and both of these uh, concepts are catching up today because it's easier to develop software appliances, it's easier to scale, and with SDN having the flexibility in the control plane logic makes it easier to change it. And there are several applications being considered for virtualization using SDN and NP, including middle boxes, various middle boxes in enterprise networks, and also several appliances in telecom networks, including the LTE packet core. So this is what I'm going to focus about. So this is a brief overview of the LTE packet core, right? So you have a user that wishes to connect to the LTE core network via a base station. So when the user first turns on his mobile, an attach request, what is called an attach request to register, is sent to the network, which is processed by a certain entity called the MME, which sets up the packet forwarding state for the user, that is sets up what is called a tunnel for the user's data, and then when the user sends the data, it goes through this tunnel. So as you can see, there are several entities here that process the user's request and several messages are exchanged back and forth. So the LTE PC, because of this complexity, is being considered an ideal candidate to see if we can gain any benefits from virtualization. So there have been proposals to use uh, NFV and EPC to redesign, NFV and SDN to redesign the EPC. For example, you could take each of the appliances that I showed you on the previous slide and put them up as uh, pieces of software running on a cloud, right? Or you could sort of redesign the system using the principles of SDN where you could tear apart, for example, this what is called the serving gateway has been torn apart into a control and data component with the control part sitting in an SDN controller and the data plane comprising of uh, SDN switches. So. Uh, there have been several proposals like this using the ideas of NFV and SDN to redesign the LTE packet core for 5G and future networks. Right, so this is where our project comes in. So the point is there are several uh, proposals like this, but uh, uh, there's no sort of uh, clear winner on which is the best design option to go about. And uh, I'm sure uh, you guys from industry know that there are several uh, startups in this uh, space and several trials going on. But uh, what we feel in the academic community is there is not an open source implementation that lets us compare the performance of all of these designs. There are a few open source frameworks uh, which basically focus on standards compliance and let you check for standards compliance. But there is no open source framework out there of the LT packet core that lets you, that is multi-threaded, is a distributed version that can scale, that lets you actually compare performance in any realistic sense, right? So this is where our project lies. So our goals are to basically develop several, several open source frameworks of the LT PC, one based on SDN, one based on NFV, one based on a mix of the two whatever it is, right? Several design choices for the future LT packet core and build these in a way that they are modular, extensible, are uh, built for high performance, for example, using multi-threading, using DPDK, using sort of performance enhancing features so that they can be used to actually compare the impact of all of these ideas on the packet core performance. And I would like to state here that our uh, non-goal is standards compliance and you know real life deployment we are not building this to be actually used in a, any real network but we are building this mostly to test uh, performance on different candidate designs so in that sense we are not very particular about getting the header formats right and so on though our code is mostly uh, standards compliant but not 100 percent compliant because that is not one of our goals so we have actually built a couple of uh, uh, candidates. Mm -hmm. One is the NFE-based EPC. So we have this uh, code out here for the MME, S-Gateway, P-Gateway. And uh, we also have a simulator for the radio part of the network to simulate the user plus the base station and also for the sync. And uh, what you can do is 
you can simulate multiple users give your own load profile give specify the behavior of the user you can load the nfe based dpc and test its performance and you can simulate attached detach user sending traffic and so on hey, similarly we all, uh, yeah uh, this one in the previous uh, slide can you yeah so i hope everybody had i mean if you couldn't see the slides i'm not sure i hope it was clear that what we are trying to do is build uh, open source prototypes for the epc which focus on performance so that it lets us test different types of uh, designs to see how they compare on the performance angle right so maybe i'll uh, skip uh, the experimental section can you just uh, So Jata can you guys uh, move on to the next few slides Yeah so what we've done is we've built two uh, versions of the EPC one based on NFE and one based on SDN and both of these versions are still evolving as I'll talk to you later and I'll just show you some preliminary experiments that we had done with these and uh, to see the kind of questions that we are interested in answering right so we've built these two and uh, this is uh, sort of our setup information we've deployed the nfe epc on an open stack private cloud here and the sdn epc on uh, ovs uh, switches right so can you just uh, move on to uh, skip the next two slides next slide maybe yeah and we've measured sort of the control plane data plane performance yeah uh, you can go back to the yeah so this is just some preliminary results the next slide please So this is some preliminary results that we have. Uh, for example, we find that when you measure control plane performance of attach, detach, and so on, we find that the NFE-based version does better because for the SDN version, the communication with the controller, the centralized controller, becomes the bottleneck for control traffic. On the other hand, next slide, please. If you look at data plane performance, the SDN switches are much better at uh, simply forwarding traffic than um, the nfe setup and therefore we get much higher performance in the sdn design so can you go on to the next slide you can just press through a couple of times so that all the bullets come so uh, what we're trying to say is uh, this is of course not the final word on any of the results what we're trying to say is different design options give you different types of performance and what is the best design for any particular network depends on the mix of the traffic expected and the specific implementation that is used for example if we change our implementation of the nfe based dpc in some way to optimize its performance that might get better and so on right so different design options can uh, change over time and this is what we are uh, banking on we are expecting people to start using our code to write up their own design options uh, to code up their own designs and compare the performance and have sort of like a spectrum of uh, performance uh, options out there for people to choose in the future right next slide please so i would uh, just like to end uh, with uh, giving you a sample of the kind of uh, research we are doing using our code right so the whole point of building this uh, piece of code and putting it out there is to let people do uh, research on sort of different design options when it comes to nfe so one particular question we are trying to answer is so if you build something in software if you build a virtual network function in software that is running on a multi core vm uh how do you distribute packets that are coming in into the machine to the multiple cores right so this is sort of a design question that uh, everybody would face and we would like to answer these kind of questions using our code for example if you look at this figure to the left side of the figure you can distribute packets directly from the nic using the multi queue feature of nic's and bind these queues to the multiple cores of a network function or you could take packets from a single queue from the hardware and then go ahead and distribute them in software either at the layer of the switch or inside uh, the vnf itself for example if you're using a kernel bypass mechanism you could read the packet with dpdk and then distribute them to multiple cores of the application so what we're trying to do is answer questions like which design option works well for what kind of vnf for example 
when building the MME functionality, one particular kind of design option might sound better while building something else, something else might sound better. So using our code, you can build up all of these things and then compare the performance of all of these design options. The other question we're answering is on what basis do you steer packets to the various cores? The traditional way, uh, for example, how RSS does in multi-queue Nix is use the TCP four tuple to distribute packets. So we are exploring, can you use the application layer semantics? For example, can you steer packets based on the IMZ field, the unique user identifier, so that packets of different IMZs are bound to different cores and you can avoid locking across data structures. So all of these questions, I mean, even if the details are not clear, what I would like to stress is when you are building uh, a piece of software, either using NFA or SDN, there are several design options to consider. And using our code uh, as sort of to build different prototypes across different designs and test them will actually let you draw good conclusions on which type of design is likely to sound good in the future. Next slide, please. So this is a, a link to our code on uh, GitHub. So we've uh, released uh, two versions of the EPC, one based on NFP and one based on SDN uh, last year. And we are also working on a uh, few enhancements to the code. For example, for the SDN version, we're using hierarchical SDN controllers. And uh, we're using uh, technologies like DPDK, NetMap to build high performance versions of the VNFs. We are using a user space network stack. We are testing our code for multi-core scalability, the kind of stuff that I talked to you on the previous slide. So we are building several design options out here. So again, even though our code is not standards uh, compliant, fully standards compliant, you can test out different design options on these prototypes and then scale it up to production use later on. So that is where uh, we feel uh, is our value add in helping you choose different design options for the future LD packet code. So that's all uh, other slides I have for today. So if there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Or please feel free to get in touch with me offline if you're interested in what we're doing or you have any other questions. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, there is a question from the room. Hi, I, I'm sorry. I had a basic question with regard to your the RF portion of your LTE base station. Did you, I know previously you had posted a simulator for the RF portion of your LTE. Is that going to be released? For, oh, sorry, for what portion? For your LTE, for the enode B? I thought you had. Uh, so that simulator is sort of part of our code as well. Okay. Yeah, Thank so you. it is along with, uh, yeah. because as the code gets updated, the simulator might also get updated with more features. So I have not specifically mentioned it. But the RAN simulator and the sync kind of come along with the EPC code. Okay. And we are right. working on sort of high performance uh, load generators, I mean, designs there as well. So, thanks. Um, I have one quick question. Uh, you know, one of your initial slides, you mentioned that you are looking for some SDN based packet. Have you looked at um, um, an open source project called Mobile Card, M Card? Uh, which is pretty much addressing the same needs that you are looking for, where um, they're disaggregating the packet core and even at the radio level. Uh, any explorations on that front have you done? Yeah, so we have sort of looked at uh, MCOD, but we have not actually installed the code and played with it. So this project had started, I think, predated uh, the release of code from MCOD. So yes, that is on our agenda to kind of compare with that and see what the sort of differences, if any. OK, one more question. Yeah, do you see any need in any of the uh, EPC nodes to have dynamic um, execution? So like uh, that might be good for a container environment where a session would start and stop depending on some activity? Um, uh, I didn't fully get your question. Dynamic execution in the sense of? Yeah, like to spin up a container to follow some user activity and then tear okay, it down. Okay, okay. Yeah. 
so we have not explored those kind of designs yet so right now the number of uh, vms is fixed so what we are doing is sort of uh, working on this auto scaling aspect where if the load increases you spawn a new vm and how do you connect it up to the rest of the ecosystem so that kind of stuff uh, we are looking at but we have not looked at it from the container angle i agree that that's much more agile but we have not yet gone there does the node workload do you see that it might align to that architecture is there something about unique either the mme or the serving gateway that would align to that so so far no we have not thought in that angle so so far we've just thought things change on a slower time scale so it there's enough time to spawn a vm but yes if the load is very dynamic we would have to so I would uh, say that no, we haven't thought about it, but yes, that's a good angle that we should look at in the future. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. So okay. I think there's also some uh, comment in the chat about uh, the CC Numa work. Yes. So with respect to CPU affinity, yes, we've sort of looked at uh, Numa support and all that. I'll follow up more offline. Thanks. I have a quick question. This is from Clara. Yeah. Um, I see that um, uh, there, there's a, there are a couple of other open source projects on this. Um, mm -hmm. They had actually combined the SP gateway. In your uh, design, do you keep them together or are they uh, separated out? Uh, right now, we keep them separate. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the functionality is mostly similar. So if we want to have a design with them combined, I think that should be easy to do. And also, but, uh, a lot of these projects are exploring uh, a new tunneling mechanism, not exactly go by the old 4G me me uh, mechanism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Is yeah, there yeah. any sections you guys are looking at? Uh, no, right now we are not looking at that. So, okay. as I said, right now we are looking at only a few specific questions. Uh, but yes, all of these are possible things to do with our code in the future. Yes. Thank you. Thanks.